verse number 31, again, this is a prophetic word that was given to us many, many years ago, before Tammy even was, you know, uh, had moved into nations, the way it is today. It's a prophetic word for Tammy, but that day the Lord told me there's also a word for our church. So let me read that word which was given to us prophetically. Acts chapter 9, Acts 9.31. So the church throughout all Judea and Galilee and Samaria had peace and was being built up. Can we use the word, it's a, it's a teaching moment, so can we repeat the word built up? And walking in the fear of the Lord and in the comfort of the Holy Spirit, it multiplied. So I want to bring this particular truth from you know, the presence of the Lord that God has given to me as a key, this is a truth that I want to bring before you. Can we put the theme for today? What is edified multiplies. Get this into your heart. What is edified multiplies. I want everybody to repeat that word if you can. What is edified, it multiplies. You know, the word edify is, a, edify is a very important word, but, you know, when we read the word in the Greek or in the original language, there's also a picture that comes in association with it. The word edify is the key word. If I could say one of the major ministry of the Holy Spirit in relation to the church is to edify the church. Do you know what? The Bible says God appointed apostles, prophets, and the other officers in the church. For what? To edify the church. Ephesians chapter 4. Why did God give spiritual gifts in the church? From 1 Corinthians 12 to 14. It says all the gifts are for one purpose. To edify the body. Why is the word of God given? The word of God is given to edify. And the Bible says love edifies. So every major move of God in relation to the church is to edify the church. A church that is not edified is not a church that is moving under the move of God. Because any church that is of God must be a church where people get edified. Now the word edify means, it's like, you know, putting together brick by brick and building something up. So when you see a building going up, it's called edify. That's a Greek word. To build something up. Let me tell you, the opposite of it is to tear something down. The opposite is to pull something apart. The opposite is you know, decompose. Because compose, it means put things together. Decompose means remove and, and let things fall apart. So God's ministry, the Holy Spirit's ministry, according to Ephesians 2.22, is to build a body, build a temple brick by brick. And let me tell you, every time the Holy Spirit moves in a church, he's building somebody. He's building somebody's faith. He's building somebody's life. And I believe in the end time, as the end time draws nigh upon us, one of the greatest ministry that should happen in the body of Christ across the globe is to build the body of Christ as a strong body that God can use as a mighty army in the last few years. Come on, can I get an amen in the house of the Lord? It is the plan of God to build. That's the purpose of the Holy Spirit. He always builds. And I want, I, don't, I want to go deeper into it. So you got the idea. The Holy Spirit's one major job is to build. And I, I want you to know, when this church is ministered by the Holy Spirit, now listen carefully. When this church is ministered by the Holy Spirit, by the Word of God, every Sunday, at every preaching of God's Word, lives are getting built. How many of you can testify you have been built much more 
in the last few months, your life is not the same as it used to be. The Holy Spirit is building your life step by step, block by block, building by building, brick by brick. Can somebody give a Lord an amen in the house of a Lord? That is a ministry of the Holy Ghost. Every gift is for that purpose. I don't want to be a preacher who tears down. I don't want to be a preacher who destroys. I want to be a builder. But let me tell you, I have also want to put a caveat over here. In the days to come, I believe God will use me to tear some things down. Paul says it. But he will only use me to tear down what is not of God, what is not on proper foundation, so that we can have a true building built on God's foundation, on God's word. Can somebody say an amen in the house of the Lord? So what need to be torn, torn down, need to be torn down, so that we can build something according to the word of God. Come on. And I'm going to give an instruction for those of you who are ministering to people in whatever capacity you do. If you ever tear down something, you are required to build it back up. You cannot tear down something and leave it in that same state. If you tear down something, you're called to build that back again according to the plans of the Holy Spirit, according to the Word of God. Can we give a Holy Spirit a praise today because he's in the business of building families, building churches, and building people? Can you give a Lord a praise in the house of the Lord? That's the ministry of the Holy Spirit. I want some of you to receive that word into your heart. Let me repeat that word once again. The ministry of the Holy Spirit is to build. The ministry of the devil is to destroy. And today I declare over this church the ministry of building which belongs to the Holy Spirit. Can we put our hands together, give the Holy Spirit a praise in the house because he does the building job. Come on. Let me ask you, is there anybody in this place who can testify personally that your life is being built by the Holy Spirit? Come on, you can do better. That's the ministry of the Holy Spirit. He builds like nobody else can. Now, so that's the ministry of the Holy Spirit. But let me make this very, very clear. How does he do it? How does the Holy Spirit build? Some of you need to ask me, Pastor, we would like to know. Yes. Let's have a teaching kind of an environment. How does the Holy Spirit build? Now, if each one of you are in the building business. Can I see all the builders here? Hmm. Can I see all the Holy Spirit builders here? Now, I'm going to ask that again. Can I see some Holy Spirit builders in the city of Edmonton whose job is to build families, whose whole job is to build lives, whose job is to bring people together, build broken lives. That's your job. The builders of the Holy Spirit. And today, it's an instruction for all the builders. I'm receiving it for myself. Now, let me say this. In the Bible... God gave a specific instruction, very specific instruction. I think people will save themselves and save a lot more lives if you heed to this instruction. It's found in Ephesians chapter 4, chapter 4. And I don't want anybody to have a frown on your face when we read this. This is God's word. Chapter 4 and verse number 29 onwards. Ephesians 4, 29 onwards. Let no corrupting talk come out of your mouths. But only such is good for building up. Every time you speak, you are either destroying or you're building. Your words will either destroy or build. So let me make this very clear. The way God uses to build people is by your words. The word is edifying. So everything that is good for edifying as fits the occasion. Now when you speak to somebody, you have to have three important questions or verification in your mind. One, who are you talking to? And when are you talking to? Because there's a season for it. And what are you talking? 
So if you can answer these three, who are you talking to? When are you talking to? Or, or, or talking? And what are you talking? That is a perfect occasion. And that builds. So you need to be attentive to the Holy Spirit to be led by Him to speak to somebody for the right moment, the right words, so that life can be built. Oh, help me. That it may give grace to those who hear. You know what the Lord told me? You know, the word used ever there in the Greek is every time you speak, your speech and your word will become a vehicle for grace to travel. It's not grace is coming out of your mouth. Your word will become the platform. Your word will become the vehicle on which grace is going to sit and move into a family. How many of you want to produce, release vehicles of grace when you speak? Somebody shout an amen in the house. Oh, come on, hallelujah. And the Bible, the next two word, this is so important. And do not give the Holy Spirit of God. Now this is connected to your speech. Why do you think this is so important the first time the Bible makes it so clear? Because the Holy Spirit is building somebody's life. And he expects you to be a co-worker with him. And what you do, or what many times many people do, they will use wrong words, negative words, words that do not help anybody, and destroy somebody's life that the Holy Spirit is building. You cannot break down what is by wrong words what God built by His grace. It's a danger if you do that. How many of you want to be a builder along with the Holy Spirit? Can you tell Holy Spirit, if you're building a family, I want to be a co-worker, not to tear them down, but to build them in the name of Jesus. Can someone receive this? Because today is a day of building lives, building families, and we need to be co-workers with Christ, with the Holy Ghost. And the Bible says, anytime you tear somebody down, you have to be very careful. Sometimes people use sarcasm. Sometimes people use this criticism. Sometimes people have this mockery. Let me tell you, you're grieving the Holy Ghost. I looked at the word. Unwholesome words. What does it mean in the Greek? Let me read this for you. It means the words, you know, it, it, it is a word that means you know, let me get these words for you. It means words that are putrefied to rot away, corrupted, decay, like a bad fruit, like a bad fish that stinks. You throw it away. You don't carry a stinking fish into your house. You may love fish, but you don't do that. You just throw it away. And that's the word, something that decays, something that is, you know, stings, that comes out of our mouth. You know, sometimes in this culture, we think it's okay to use some words. You know, I'll give you two examples. Two examples. Please try not to mix the word holy with something. Come on. Never do that. And never use words that that does not bring, that does not become the word that God can travel on. Grace can travel on. Some people look at people and say, you know what? I don't think this will never change. I don't think, you know, it's, it's ever going to change. You know, you have to be careful. And today your words can tear down and that becomes corruptible. Words that can decay. You know what's a word used in the Greek? It means sapros or sapros. Sapros, from where we get the word saprophyte, meaning it's an organism, especially a fungus or bacterium that grows and derives its nourishment from dead and decaying matter. Somebody's word will say whether he's feeding on dead or he's feeding on life. 
your words will describe or explain what are you feeding on. The word Paul uses, sapros, meaning your word is now a word that is feeding, it's a bacteria that feeds on dead, decaying bodies. Death. No wonder death is spreading. You know, don't use words that are double meaning. Don't use words even for fun. Because your mouth will describe whether you're building or you are tearing it down. And today I'm calling the church as we're entering a season of the move of God that we will release words that will carry the grace of God on somebody's life. If you believe that, shout a hallelujah in the haham if you want to say, God, touch my mouth so my words will be words that's going to build somebody, build my family, build my children, build my future because today there's going to be anointing of building that's going to come upon people and we cannot be using words like people are out on the streets, even though it might look as being part of the click of, 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 of the club or the click. You know, it might look, make you look very modern and 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 and, and you know what? What's the word? Cool. Let me tell you, you might look cool, but you're spreading death. And God says, son, you spoke those words because you're feeding on death and you're putrefied. You are, you are, you are, you're decaying. Your life is decaying and you're spreading death into somebody's life. And today, I cancel every such word and I declare people are going to speak words that's going to bless somebody's life. Can I get a hallelujah in the house of the Lord? We are called to edify the body of Christ. You know, I don't understand why would people use the word H-E-L-L for every sentence? Why can't you escape from that word? I'll tell you why. Because your life is defined by that word and it seems that you're heading to that place. And let me tell you, it's time to stop and say, I will not let my God, let my tongue be used as a weapon of the devil. I'm going to use my tongue to build somebody's life, to encourage somebody, to edify somebody. Let me tell you, that's the key to build your faith. And everything that edifies will multiply. Get this into your life. If you look at Acts 9.35, the church was edified and it started to multiply. It's a, it's a theme that you can expect or put it in your business and everywhere. If you can edify something, it will start to multiply. This church is going to be multiplying because we have some people who have been edified by the Lord. We have been people edified by the Holy Ghost. It's time to multiply. Nothing that is, that is not edified can multiply. Let me tell you, if you have been edified by the Holy Ghost, get ready, you're going to multiply. Can somebody speak over yourself and say the days of multiplication is happening because God first will edify you and then multiply you. If you're starting a business, put this as a motto of your business. People that are edified will multiply. Let me tell you, two, three days, you start to encourage your pastor. The next week's message will be, the, after that encouragement, the message itself will be different. Because when I get edified, I start to multiply. Come on, hallelujah. And I'm releasing that on some people. Today, the days of being stuck as one, as solitary, is coming to an end. What is edified is going to be multiplied in the name of Jesus. Can I hear somebody helping me preach over here? But the Bible says you have to be careful with what you speak. You cannot break and destroy something that God has been building for years by a word that you spoke. And if you have done it, you need to repent and say, God, from now on, every time I open my mouth, a vehicle will go out which will carry the grace of God to build somebody's life and somebody's future. I want to go a little more deeper. The Lord gave me a key this afternoon and I, I started confessing before God. 
I tried to be very careful to speak words, but sometimes in, in that mood or mode, it comes out, then I go and repent, because I know words are powerful. Words are powerful. But I'm going to give something very powerful. Get ready, put on your seatbelt. This is a key. You know, I found a very powerful key, and this is the first time the Lord opened my eyes to that, and I want to release it for you. In 1 Corinthians chapter 14, 14, 1 Corinthians 14, oh, hallelujah. Where is 1 Corinthians chapter 14? And verse number... From, from one on, it's all of, of, of edifying. Chapter, verse number four. Can you read? The one who speaks in a tongue builds up himself. Why is the reason why God, why God gave you tongues? Edify, that's a word. Every time you're speaking in tongues alone, you're building yourself up. It's not for you to look super spiritual. But then who prophesies builds up the church. Let me tell you one of the good features of this church. Every message is soaked and saturated with prophetic flavor. And I believe that's the reason people who come to the church go back built every Sunday. Because a word is coming with a prophetic anointing. Can I get an amen in the house of the Lord? The, it's only prophetic anointing that can build the body of Christ. A preacher must preach with a sense that the word is not just a word written 2,000 years ago, but the word is for now and the word is powerful now. The word can do things right now. That is a prophetic nature of the word of God. Can somebody help me over here? How many of you are happy? How many of you are happy to be in a church where every preaching is under the prophetic anointing of the Lord? Hey, because that's the way the church gets built. Oof. But without being theological right now, I want to bring the key out because it's very much tempting to you know, go on a tangent. 16, okay, 16, verse number 16. Otherwise, if you give thanks with your spirit, how can anyone in the position of an outsider say amen to your thanksgiving when he does not know what you're saying? Verse number 17. For you may be giving thanks well enough, but the other person is not being built up. Paul is saying, even if you have got the gift of tongues, in the public display of it, it is not, some people have used it to question the speaking of tongues in the church. That is blatantly wrong. Paul is addressing a situation where he's saying, if you are talking to the church, you better speak in five words that they can understand. More than hundred words that they cannot understand. Son me. She's looking at me. I spoke in an unknown tongue to her called Malayalam. And she's saying... When I speak to her, I have to speak to her in a language that she can understand. How are you, sister? God bless you. Thank you. <laughs> Hallelujah. Look at the joy on her face. That's all what Paul is trying to say. I can teach on it later. But this is not what Paul is saying. Paul knew that some people are going to, especially from, you know, from these churches that are more modern, they'll try to pre prevent the speaking of tongues. So Paul says, I thank God that I speak in tongues more than all of you. Come on. I am a tongue-speaking guy. I speak in tongues more than any of you. But when I'm speaking to somebody, this is the key word he used. He used the word, I'm giving thanks. So when I give thanks, that person should understand. And when he says amen to that, he will get built up. Verse number 17. Can you read that? For you may be giving thanks well enough, but the other person is not being built up. 
So let me say, I'm giving thanks. Turn me, I thank God for your life. And you say, Amen. You know what it did? The moment I spoke a word of thanks over a life, it is also a word of blessing. She said, Amen. Without she knowing, she has now, the, the word has, is now building her up. Sometimes I go to people and simply say, God bless you. Because I want that word to build them up. So what God spoke to me this afternoon, he said, everything that gets built up will start to multiply. If I speak to send me a hundred times that she is a blessing, she is a blessing, believe me, in the days to come, she will have a send me corner there because she is bringing more people into the house of the Lord. Come on. Are you ready to receive it? You will start to multiply. Your life will start to multiply because you are getting the word that is building you up. How many of you want to multiply in the days to come? In the name of Jesus, you are not going to be alone. You are going to multiply. If somebody is not multiplying, I want to declare it with some sorrow. You are not being encouraged in the Lord. You are not getting edified. So let me give this principle. Are you ready? The Lord told me, Thanksgiving will release edification. Edification will release multiplication. And how many of you know, when Jesus took the barley, can you give me that basket? One, 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 one. Put that, give me an empty basket with one cover. One cover. I hope it's a good cover. When Jesus took that barley bread, and the Bible says he gave thanks. And the word is eulogio in, in the Greek. From where you make the word eulogy, eulogy, eulogy. When somebody dies, you talk something good about them. At least then. That's the word eulogy, and you, that word comes from eulogium in the Greek. Eulogio in the Greek, that's the word. So Jesus took this bread, and what he did was, he gave thanks. And the Lord told me, son, he took a barley bread. How many of you know the first fruit in the Old Testament is always a barley fruit? You have to wave it before the priest. The barley when it comes. Because when you wave it as a thanksgiving, you're declaring in the days to come, there's a huge harvest that's following this barley and much more is going to happen. Let me tell you, anytime you wave something that God has given to you in the atmosphere of thanksgiving, get ready for multiplication. Get ready for increase. In the name of Jesus, somebody shout a hallelujah. And that's exactly what Jesus is doing. It's a barley bread. And barley was considered to be the bread of the poor. And how many of you know the Bible says this was three days affair. It was a three days conference. And probably this bread is now stinking. In that heat of that place, it's rotten. But Jesus takes the barley bread and the Bible says he gave thanks. Remember, this is so important, after many days, many days, in John chapter 6, when people talk about that miracle, you know what they said? They did not say, the Bible does not say, it was a place where the bread multiplied. It says a place where Jesus gave thanks. The Bible does not speak about that place as a place that God multiplied or the bread God multiplied. It simply says the place where Jesus gave thanks. Let me tell you, multiplication is God's business. Your business is to give thanks to the Lord for what? Can somebody shout a hallelujah in the house of the Lord? Now listen closely. There's a prophetic word I want to release over you today. A multiplication is about to happen. Are you ready? You know, in the days to come, when God sees this church and makes a statement about this church, he's not going to say the church that grew by hundreds. He's not going to say the church that became 2,000. He's going to say a church that gave thanks to the Lord. 
Because for God, that's all what matters. Because God has instituted this principle. You know, come Bobbin. What God did was, what Jesus did, the moment he said thanksgiving, okay, the word eulogy said something good about it. The Bible says it'll get edified. Hold this. It becomes edified. You know what it means? The every particle in that bread started to become stronger, built. Once upon a time, this bread was so feeble, if you break it, that will be the end of the bread. It will crumble. But now because of edification, even if you break it, the power is still. It is strong enough. Jesus will not break every bread. He will only break bread that he knows. Even if I break, he is still built. He is still strong. He, come on, can I see some bread that is strong in the Lord? That is edified in the Lord. He knows he can break it. Hey. People have come to me for prayer. They, knows, they know if I know there's a strong person in this church, I normally don't give a comforting and comfort at your level kind of counseling. I will say, move. I will, I will try to encourage. I will start to put them, put them into the move because I know this brother, even if I break, he is going to keep on producing. I can't say that with everybody. Some people have to be so sensitive. One word, they will fall crumbled. But let me tell you, when Jesus saw this bread, he knew by his thanksgiving, this bread has got a constitution of being built up. Come on. Every proton, every atom is now built up. Come on. For a multiplication. Let me tell you everything that is edified will multiply. Where did the multiplication happen? It took the first built edified piece into a basket and the edified piece said whoo I'm about to multiply come on I'm going to nations I'm multiplying because it's not just any piece it is an edified piece now in the basket the multiplication did not happen in somebody's mouth it happened in the basket Hey, come on, hallelujah. As the disciples are giving, who more? Who? Who? Because this is now edified pieces of bread. Whatever is edified will multiply. Let me tell you something. If God has blessed you, and if you have blessed the Lord in your situation, no matter what kind of breaking you're going, you're going to multiply in the name of Jesus. Somebody say. Oh, can I say get some edified pieces of bread in this place? Some edified pieces, edified families, edified children. Let me tell you, wherever they put you, you're going to multiply. Ooh, come on, hallelujah. The season of multiplication is coming. Can you write this, this principle into your life? Everything that is edified will multiply. Jesus gave thanks. That's all what he did. And the Bible says, when you give thanks, the hearer will get built up. And finally they said, it's all over. They ate to the full. And 12 baskets are sitting there with little crumbs. Everything over. But a little crumb said, hey, we cannot stop multiplying. They started to multiply without anybody praying. Nobody is serving, but sitting in that corner, they started to multiply. When Peter came, the, this is overflowing now. The basket is overflowing. Let me tell you, that's the anointing of multiplication because Jesus spoke a word. 
when you take your situation and say god is good when you take your situation and say look what the lord has done this far when you look at a situation and say thank you father for you have been good to me let me tell you you're putting the situation in a corner in a basket where it's going to multiply without you Can even 12 baskets finish the job and they, they just left it there and went. Because it's, it's over. Everybody ate. But they didn't know that there were some more particles there. That has got the anointing of multiplication. 12 leftovers. They used to take it. Not one crumb should fall. Because that's till the need, till you need, it's going to keep multiplying. Because it's been edified. I'm here to declare every brother, every sister, every child that God edified in the last few days, you're about to multiply in the name of Jesus. Can you give a Lord a mighty shout? Come on, somebody give a Lord a praise. The days of multiplication is coming upon the church because you said Eulogy or, or that's the word eulogy. You gave thanks. But can you stay there, Bobin? The Lord told me to release this prophetically over the church. There was a man. You know what this word is used again in the Bible? Lazarus too. There was a man by the name Lazarus. He's dead. I went and looked at the signs of death. And I came to realize that the decomposition will start in a few hours. And the word, the opposite of edify is decompose. Because Paul says, when my body, external tabernacle, starts to fall down. You know what happens is there's bacteria in your body that'll start to break down the cells. Every cell in the body will start to break down. That's called decomposition. It's not built up, it's breaking down. When you are living, whatever you ate built you up. But when you're dead, there's no building up. A man who's five feet will not become six feet. After he dies. No building up. Everything will start to collapse. That's the opposite of the word edify. And that's the reason God said, let your speech be speech that will not decay. That will not bring forth decay. And I believe this man's body, his cells, some of the organs, they say the organs will start to dissolve in that, in that chemical, what do you call, the acid will dissolve itself. It's happening in his body. And I believe Jesus, when he stood at the entrance of the tomb and said, Father, I give thanks. He released the principle that will bring broken bodies back to being built up. He spoke that word and I believe every cell that was taken by bacteria which was left, it got edification. It got the, the release to build back. And finally, what is built will start to multiply. Every cell in Lazarus' body that was gone started to multiply. And I believe when Jesus said, Lazarus, come forth, the ministry had already started. When he gave thanks. And the Lord told me to tell you, today when you speak a word, 
when you look at a dead situation whether it's a son your daughter any situation say son i thank god for giving you to me and i thank god for you will be a blessing in the future it may not look like it is going to be enough but i am going to declare that over your life you know what you're doing even the dead cells and the decomposed cells in the body is coming back to being rebuilt come on somebody can you give a lord a praise in the house of a lord this is an anointing that's going to come upon people right now in the name of jesus can you speak a word that's going to build somebody's life Life, that's going to bring somebody's life back to building up your family is not deteriorating your family is not decomposing your family is going to be built back and reach the place of multiplication can you say amen in the house of allah let no corrupt words come out of your mouth but rather giving off thanks When you're doing that, you're walking in the anointing to build, to make it strong, and then multiply. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I look at every believer, every child of God sitting in this house, and I declare over you, you are blessed in the name of Jesus. Come on, I declare over you, you are a blessing. Can somebody put your hands together, give a Lord a praise in the house of a Lord. When I do that, when we do that, you know, grace is multiplying, peace is multiplying. Come on, finances are multiplying. Everything else has to multiply because what is edified will have to multiply. Father, I speak this over my people. Get ready, get ready. Because the moment it starts to break down, it will break down, 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 and the breakdown will continue. But today it has to be reversed. It has to be reversed. You are not going to be hit by decay. You are going to be hit by the anointing of edification. If anybody wants that, can you make some expression, some gesture, some faith move in the house of a Lord? You're not going to be hit by, come on, decay or decomposition. You're going to be hit by anointing, an anointing of the Holy Spirit to edify your life, to edify your family. So you can start multiplying from this minute onwards. It's not the parasite of decay. It's not the bacteria of decay. It's the anointing of multiplication that's coming upon your life. Can you say, I receive it in the name of Jesus? The Lord's word said, the miracle did not happen in the mouth. It happened in the basket. Because pieces that got edified fell into the basket. And before you know, because anything that is edified will multiply. I'm declaring this over everybody. Whatever God has edified in your family, in your life, let it be multiplied. If you believe that, can you say amen in the house of the Lord? Let it be. Can we go back to Ephesians 4? Ephesians 4, verse number 30, 31. Ephesians 4, 30, 31. Do not, verse number 29, please. Let no corrupting talk come out of your mouth, but only such is good for building up as fits the occasion, that it may give grace. You know, you are not giving grace, but your word will become a vehicle. Grace. So I asked the Lord, what do you mean by words of grace? The Lord told me, anytime you speak a word, grace will sit on it and go into somebody's life. It's a vehicle. Do you want to know this as a confirmation from God's word? Acts 20.32. Acts 20.32. Look what it says. Acts 20.32. And now I commend you to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to 
Every time word of grace goes out, decaying will stop. Crumbling will stop. Building up will start. How many of you want to say, God, I don't understand it fully, but I need that anointing. I'm receiving it. I'm receiving it. I want words to come out of my mouth that will build. Come on, can I get somebody to receive it? So I asked the Lord, what is this word? The Lord told me, grace means, whenever you bring the word grace means, what is impossible to man. It's always about, you cannot use the word grace outside of God. In the Bible. It means God's supply. God's, what God can do. So if we can look at a situation and say, you know what, I still believe. My God is able. Grace. Grace. Can I ask you, is anybody in this place who wants this anointing where your words will not start decay, but will start to build up people? Come on, put your hands together, give a lot of praise. But if you do that, if you do that, come on, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Grace. Anybody that I see speak a word, they get built up. Amen. Come on, anybody wants an anointing. You know, it's not that decaying bacteria that you're releasing. That's a word used in the Greek. But it's an it's a anointing that's going to build. Even the dead will come out. Even what has started to decay will come back in the name of Jesus. Can you receive it? The anointing of resurrection is coming upon the church. But we need some people to speak the word of grace. No more speaking words that the devil can use to start a process of decay. Churches have been destroyed by words. Be careful. And the Lord told me to tell you this. If you speak the word of grace, he is promising us something today. With that, you can go back home. If you want to rejoice with this promise, rejoice it. It's very clear. Receive it. Acts chapter 14 and verse number 3. If you start to speak the words of grace out of your mouth, meaning you look at a situation and say, God is still able. God can do it. My God is faithful. When you do that, so they remain for a long time speaking boldly for the Lord who bore witness to the word of his grace. That means when you speak a word of grace, God is about to stand up and say, I'm going to give proof to what you are saying. Can somebody, hey, I hear a mighty voice. You are entering the days of proof from heaven. Oh, come on, how many of you want to see proof? God says, I'm going to give proof to the word of grace by granting signs and wonders to be done in, in the name of Jesus by their hands. Can I speak over you in the days to come? Are you ready? When you speak a word in a situation that is so difficult and that word becomes a vehicle for grace to be transported, God says, get ready. You're going to see some signs, some miracles, some healings happening in the name of Jesus. If you want an anointing, somebody make a shout of praise in the house. Close your eyes. This is God's promise. If you release grace through your words, meaning this should be objective, every word that I speak should build up. And what is built up will multiply. Pastor Dino, would you please come? Let's pray together. Are you ready? Lord, I pray for all our sisters and brothers. Some of them are so alone. I declare multiplication in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. 
Father, I thank you for all the gifts. The spiritual offices of the church, it's only for one purpose, so they can be edified. When they get edified, they will start to multiply. I declare in the name of Jesus Christ, the anointing of multiplication upon this church. But Lord, you also said to me that you're going to use our tongues to bring this ministry of edification. Whoever we speak to, they're going to be built up. Yes. Lord, give us the faith to look at impossible situation and still give thanks. <sighs> to say, God, you are a beautiful God. You are a bountiful God. You are a merciful God. Your gifts are always good. When you keep saying that, the Lord says, even the things that you don't give attention, he's going to multiply in the name of Jesus. You wake up in the morning to see multiplication. And the Lord says the things that you said, dear Lord Jesus, you're stinking now. It started to decompose. He's going to come out completely healed, completely resurrected in the name of Jesus because of the power of edification. Thank you, Lord, it's been done. Children are coming out. Families are coming out. Ministries are coming out. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord, it's been done. I release this upon your people right now. In the days to come, I'm going to hear testimonies from this place. Thank you, Lord, it's been done. In every situation I say, give thanks to the Lord for his good, his mercy endureth forever. Thank you, Lord, for the miracle and multiplication. Let it happen from this moment onwards. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Everybody said, 